Salutations, everyone. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, and thank you for rejoining me here in TWR, the Thousand Week Reich, in which we are playing as a beautiful United States of America with Douglas MacArthur. So, uh, let's get through some comments and talk about what happened last episode. Uh, someone recommended, or some someone said that in the comments from the last video, that we need to find MacArthur's hat. Yeah, he, he has hair. It's, it's kind of thinning out now, but we got to get his hat back, you know, the one that we all remember from World War II. Um... He could really use his hat. I could use a hat too, probably as well. And the Transvoga has just capitulated. Cool. Uh, so it's recommended in the comments. Oh, actually, hold on. Tirana Pact. Well, good luck with that, Albania. Um, that I give back the Benelux to the respective countries of Belgium and Netherlands. The Netherlands, of course, is in Suriname over here. And, of course, Belgium is over there. Now, I want to get involved. They don't have this cord. Harsh import tax. Oh. I want to see if there might be any decisions, maybe, so they'll get this country back naturally. I kind of say, thinking that there probably won't be, but I guess we'll have to see what happens. Last time, Germany also, or I guess the People's Republic took out Germany. Someone said Strasser might come to power, maybe, maybe not, they're socialists, but we'll see what happens, maybe, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to mess up the games too much with, like, console commands and the state change tool mod i want to see it to see if things actually happen naturally because this is this is still my first well maybe not my first campaign but one of my earlier campaigns in the thousand week reich so i want to give it some time maybe sort itself out maybe maybe not but so we'll, we'll wait just a little bit mountaineers we could grab that what about armor 55 infantry fighting people what we're doing so well and everything what else am i going to research besides like Naval auction. I guess we could do that since we do have a lot of ships. Uh, let's go over here. And the centrist criticized policy. Um, okay, senators. Well, we got 5% more support. That's, so that's not bad. And a plea from Armenia. A letter arrived today as your office president from the new Socialist Republic of Armenia. According to them, they seek our protection to as to protect their democracy from the class of the clause of Nazism. The most hawkish among our leadership is calling for us to guarantee the independence of the new state to contain Nazism wherever it may go, but it may also just like committing to such a protecting such a small country in a less strategically important location may be counterproductive. Well, okay, what the heck, Armenia? Like, bruh. Oh, Krikor Armirian. Democratic socialism, internal market, harsh import tax, protectionism, defend the fatherland. Uh... We didn't end up going to fight them. I can't even get over there. We must protect all against Nazism. Um, I guess I can't even get over there. So I'm gonna. If this gets us into war, so be it. We'll do it anyways. And if anyone else goes to war, then we could probably take them out. But oh well, I'm not really sure what to do about that right now. Oh, we can send rifles, maybe. Let's see. What I really want to do. Aiding the Russian Republic, which we need to talk about in a little bit. I want to go to war with Italy. I want to deal with them. I want to see what we can do with them. But without that big old border with Germany, it's going to be a lot more difficult. But that doesn't mean impossible. That does not mean impossible. So I'm going to line you guys up all right here if we can. Maybe incur some penalties to our stability or organization. And I'm going to put you guys down here. We might end up going to war with these guys. We best be prepared. And I guess we're kind of done up here then. For now, at least. And then I'm actually going to take you all off for here, from here. And then you guys... Okay, a little bit of luck. Come over here, if you can. We should be able to. Yes, we should. Uh, let's see. More submarinos. That's good, because we lost quite a few last time. Throw some more light cruisers over here, because we can. You guys are heading down there. You guys are doing okay over here. Don't really need you over here, probably, too much, though. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wrong group. Wrong group. It's you guys. I want you guys will do it over down here. If we end up going to war with the Italians, just go ahead and prepare ourselves first. Um, so we'll do that. Let's see. Hopefully Germany just does join us. I really doubt they will. I don't know why they... Oh, did they get their Carpatho-Ukrainian? Oh, Carpatho-Ukrainian stuff. West African... Indi oh, shnikes. De Gaulle person personally promised with African native legions, the West African nations have finally been granted their independence after the successful liberation of the French homeland. As France last gestures of gratitude towards Africa, the status between France and her West African colonies should all become that of equals. Well, at least de Gaulle made good on his promise, so let's get some of that. Are they in the Toronto Accords? Some of them are mostly not. Can I go to war with them? I cannot. That is big sadness. Big sadness. But let's grab some more resource efficiency gain, because 
why not? Why not? Uh, that's really sad, but hey, you know what? At least we have a good, strong, free French Republic led by Charles de Gaulle in mainland Europe, even though he's got a minority state. Neo-colonial oppression? oppression? The very instability negates efforts at reforms, as attempts to sway the boat may well result in the collapse of the exiled government. The Italian thaw, the Italian dictatorship is not what it used to be. The immediate resignation of Benito Mussolini alongside multiple economic reforms pressed by the Grand Council. A little too a little too too little too late. Oh my goodness. Uh is Italy gonna end up in a civil war or something? Okay, a, there's some serious lag. What's going on? Oh, hello. End of fascist Italy, okay. Democracy comes to another stage. Yeah, I just saw Slovenia got more other country. Okay, sure. Republic, eighteen thousand manpower, not a lot. Trieste. Oh wow, that 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 is its own little tile. It's Southern Trieste and Northern Trieste. Oh my goodness. Uh, Italy, are you feeling okay? Your paternal autocrats under Giovanni Messi, Ali Akbar Khan plays in America, and there goes Armenia. Music has always been a part of New York City's history. The life of the city pulses through the beat of jazz drums, vibrant rhythms by night, and the gentle sounds of the classical composers by the day. The insomniac city has an insatiable appetite for the new and the exotic, the most ex unexpected motive at the end of the bar, and tonight someone has been invited from Delhi himself to wet their palates. Ali Akbar Khan looks uncertain as he walks on stage at the Museum, museum of Modern Art, to a smattering of applause dressed only in robes of white, clutching something that looks twice well, it looks like a loop at his far greater proportion. He bows twice or bows twice to the audience, sits on a carpeted floor as he rejects a chair, citing artistic concerns, and nods for a sitarist, Ravi Shankar, to come up on stage. The two sit together, murmuring to each other in audible tones, and they begin to play. What follows is, in a word, magical. The sarod, for that is what Ali calls it, becomes a veritable orchestra in his capable hands. The lifting melodies of the strings waft and wafer before the audience, suggesting as turns sorrow and grief, desperation and joy blended into a single coherent melody. Lush and rich as the melody's climaxes, sparse and coy when it retreats, the notes of Shankar's sitar trace the contours of human emotion with almost inhuman grace. As the Jugal Bandi tapers off and ends, the audience erupts into frenzied applause. Ali and Shankar bow again, thanking the Americans for the time withdrawal, but the tunes will stay in the national imagination for a very long time. A beautiful performance from our Indian friends. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now, this is interesting. Hellenic Republic, Portuguese, and Croatia, and Montenegro are all allied. Union member, because in the same faction. Economic failure. Well, what do you expect? Oh, wait, we can't. What? We can't deal with Italy? Oh, what? Ugh. We might want to move fast. The state of Hungary. We can't even get to Hungary. Hmm. With the Nazis defeated, we must crush the last holdouts of fascism and national socialism in Europe. How strong is Hungary? They're probably not that weak, and there's no. Uh, there's no port down here. They're Prussia, the Balkans, or Balkan Prussia. Hmm. Ivan, huh? Wrestled with the bundle of sticks at the top. Uh, hit back. A formation of Zapotoslavia. Oh, let's hope they recover. Let's hit back. I get 10% more support in the House of Representatives. Very good. I would like to attack here, but we just have no members from the Toronto Courts that could help us take them out. And are we suffering from attrition here? No, we're not. We're actually needing more supplies. Oh, we have Cyprus, though. That's interesting. We could invade Greece, but they're not fascist. For prosperity, prosperity through capitalism. The current administration's policies of boosting growth by encouraging private investment are seeing success. The slashing of corporate taxes and deregulation of industries has fostered a wave of investment and innovation, accelerating the economic prosperity that America has seen for years already. While side effects are being seen with falling workers' rights and working conditions, gradually increasing inequality and the potential for monop monopolization, the government is confident that these issues can be kept in check and are worth the rewards. Onwards to prosperity. Cool. Decreased interest rates? Uh, 3 and 3.5% is not bad. We can always get the war goal anyways. There's... We can't really either just justify on other people. So, it's 55. We're going to soon have an election. Let's make sure we get some more house support. Maybe we are on partial mobilization. Yeah, we can't do anything about war economy yet. So, I guess maybe some more house support. That'd be pretty ideal for us, I guess. Mm, you know what? Just in case. Decrease interest rates, which would increase inflation. I don't want to do that. Let's just get, grab this anyway, just so that we always have the war goal against them. Just in case things go... Wow, that's disgusting. The Union of Zapodoslavia. we got some mass production here. It's 55. Uh, anything down here? Nothing. We can't do jack squat down there. That's really unfortunate. Better flamethrowers? Yeah, why not? More soft attack? Sure. That is ugly. I am sorry, but that is incredibly ugly. Oh my goodness. Artillery barrage? Good. 
more land doctrine, tactical exploitation, more breakthrough for infantry and tanks. Are you guys suffering from two principles? They have enough manpower. They got some resistance. A million manpower. That's really cool. Military industrial complex. Anti totalitarian network. Sole ruler of Poland. A bulwark. It's a bulwark. Let's see. Free but inter internally chained. And this is. Hard to see, but German integration program. No, no, that's uh. Okay, we can't see this one. Okay. Uh, Sikorsky's over there. Jan Zhihu's odd maneuvers. Recently, FBI observations on Jan or Gan Zhihu, diplomat of the Chinese diplomatic service and underling of Li Zongren, are indicating a drastic change in behavior alongside odd maneuvers. Operative, operatives report that Jan or Jan was recalled by China due to political concerns and non. Najing or Nanjing, though John Ji Hu has res resisted such attempts of extraction for his own safety in the confines of the United States. Keep an eye on them. Something's going on in China, which is why I've not done anything yet. Uh, so let's talk about a few more comments. So, like in the last episode, we gave the Sakhalin Islands to Russia. There should have been an event saying that we should like give it to them just for free, like what we did. Give it to them, but force them to join the Toronto Accords or just flat out refuse no. Um, so if the devs are watching, I don't know if they are or not. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I might recommend adding that in as an option. I'm not sure that it would screw up the tree for the Russian Republic, but I think that'd be a great addition if we could do that, if that could happen, because I think that'd be really, really cool. Uh, they can't join. It's not allowed to join factions, but the report. Uh, we've reported on the person and other Chinese diplomatic servicemen that Mao Bangzhu have formed an alliance against the rest of the diplomatic service. FBI Director Hoover has issued a directive ordering the operatives to prepare for a dialogue with the disgraced Chinese officials. Do you want some volunteers, sir? No, we cannot. One of the following must be true. All of the following must be true. Oh. Uh, well, we cannot send volunteers. Okay. I mean, in the meantime, we need to really focus on ourselves, improving our weaponry, but Man or Mao Gan Connections, a series of incriminating documents against the Chinese government, was leaked to the press. According to these documents, American development funding to China has been mismanaged due to corrupted Chinese agents operating in the U.S. However, the criminal behavior of the Chinese services in America does not end there. Allegedly, planes have been smuggled into China without the filling or filing of formal documentation and taxations. False accounts have been channeled to senior Chinese leadership bank accounts. Most importantly, CIC is allegedly complicit in conducting illicit surveillance and covert operations on American soil. Investigations conducted by the FBI have now begun, with Jan Jihu and Mao Bangzhu now protected by the federal government. Alongside these developments, Hoover has issued an order on what the investigations focus on. Taxation or corruption? Silence the ranks. Let's go with... I want to go with taxation. Corruption would be important, but let's do uh, taxation, man. Um... Let's go with taxation. Let's, let's see what that is. So the Mao Gan Papers. Shocking news, the nation is outraged. Protest action, and we have the Vietnamese Republic down there. Oh, Socialist Vietnam, in a world where America supports Socialist Vietnam is weird. So it whispers from the aisles, following the accusations of smuggled aircrafts, a joint IRS-FBI investigation has revealed substantial evidence, revealing that these smuggling operations have been masterminded by the Commerce International of China. Actively aided and abetted by retired American officers affiliated with the Chinese military advisory group, headed by retired Admiral... Charles M. Cook Jr. While the prosecutions may begin, a secret directive has been issued to the prosecutors ordering that they should focus on the businessmen, focus on the advisory group. Ooh. Focus on the businessmen. I like political power. Because that way... God, I wish we could deal with Italy. I should have clicked on that before they went democratic. The Senate. We shall have more support. Increase private investments. Opening of Gotland International. What? Oh, yeah. So... Nazism has not been defeated yet. Um, Alden Frauenfeld. Frauen is woman. Women. For Frauen, for multiple, for, uh, multiple, plural. Alfred Feld. I forgot what Feld is. It was like, simply multiple women. But Chinese froze, assets frozen. Following the American government's declaration or decision to target the affiliated Chinese businessmen, members of the Commerce International of China are being actively persecuted. Moreover, the executive branch has made the decision to freeze CIC members' bank assets, attempting to freeze further financial transactions of foreign geopolitical threats. The Chinese government has issued a furious condemnation v. comparing the U.S. actions to a robbery. Look at a military factory! And we have mutual understandings as both sides exchange information regarding to the recent allegations. The efforts to rebuild some semblance of a steady relationship has finally started. While Chinese-American friendship has been broken beyond the point of no return. The situation has finally stabilized and some trust has restored. Trust has been restored between the two? 
The cold peace. Uh, as arguments between China and America are finalized, it's mutually agreed upon withdrawals of foreign agents on both sides and the formal shutdown of the Chinese lobbying groups has marked an end of the crisis. Well, a sense of normalcy and peace have restored, the relationship between China and America have taken on a new tense tone. Ah, at least we've got a Cold War, finally. So we have some of the coup stuff, which we can't do. I was focusing a lot on the naval stuff earlier, and some of the military stuff, which isn't bad. I like the speed and attack, but that's okay. We can't do that there. We already did the Great Crusade. Um, I'm going to keep doing some of this stuff. We stand against the Chinese authoritarianism. Is this 2020 or is this 1955? But anyways, increase science funding. Let's do that. Well, let's not do that because we have nothing to research until 1956, probably. Over here, let's see. I guess we could desegregate the army. 280 days, Jesus Christ. The war highlighted the need to have a single cohesive military structure, undivided by race, but integration is yet to be fully realized. With the probability of a new military conflict increasing every day, it is in our interest to finally desegregate the military. So we lose political power, more recruitable population for factor, more stability. Cool. Five research slots, not bad. Let's grab some more sub stuff. Undersea blockade, great. Um, I guess in the meantime, just go and train. Yeah, why as well? I mean, what else are we going to do here? Train if you need it. Uh, you guys train as well. Instead of doing that, uh, train as well. Uh, Norelsk was annexed by the Russian Republic. Time for a sip of coffee. We got a lot of stability, a lot of war support. The Republic of India is looking very nice with no more independent nations down there. So that looks really, really good. There's Burma. There's no Bangladesh yet. There's Pakistan, of course. I'm just... Really want to take out the German People's Republic. Forming the United Front? What? What? The United Front? The Volksfront becomes a coalition of parties, huh? Well, okay. Well, y'all do you, I guess. Even though you really should be under us. But whatever. Uh, get some mountaineers because we can afford that for now. We've got any other guys here? More army units? Uh, honestly, I'm going to convert you all to Marines. If I can, I cannot. God dang it. I can't even convert you to Marines. Okay, then. We got the tanks over here, so everyone, if you need to, go ahead and train. You guys train as well. Might as well, right? Oh, Marines. Yes, please. Over there. Then you over there, too. Oh, thank you. Excavation 2. Great. We can't do that, so let's go ahead and grab some military police, because we can. So, armor divisions, huh? 20 combat with. Get rid of that. So, usually, what is it? 5 and 5? No, it's usually not 5 and 5. It's usually 6 4, I think. Even though organization is not bad, but I'm going to ruin it with more main battle tanks. Uh, it's actually not ruined at all. It actually looks, looks, looks not too bad. Now, I would like to make this 40 combat width. So that's not a bad idea. However, I do want to keep an eye on organization. Uh, let time go on for now. We're going to need way more tanks for this. Cypher for the US, or USSR is done. That's good. Main battle tanks. So the 10th anniversary V-Day. It's been a, over 10 years since V-Day. And its echoes are still strongly, strongly felt. The post-Pacific War baby boom is still growing strong, which is good, although the burn of it, it, it is over, though. The veterans are now getting older as their children are growing up after the rose-colored uh, glasses of victory. Concerns over the U.S.'s methods in the days after X Day up to X plus 93 have begun to be heard in the din of celebration. Uh, was 11 instances of atomic fire coupled with the chemical devastation of Japan's rice crops really necessary? Probably. Critics now say that possibility, or possibly, if the U.S. had been patient and had not invaded quite yet, that maybe two or three bombs would have been enough. Oh, we get... Oh, hold on. So, let's see. We get rid of memories of the Pacific War. So, monthly population goes down. Consumer goods goes down. Attack bonus against them goes down. They were in the trees, man. Memories of the Pacific. So, we actually just get a smaller bonus. Smaller, smaller, smaller bonus, which is fine. Uh, let's see. Definitely do China. I don't trust the Chinese. Is this 2020 or... It's only 55, right? It sounds like 2020. Uh, field hospitals? Because we can. Why not? What else am I going to research? I mean, doctrines, of course, but still. Here we got Jordan. That's pretty cool. Uh, they have Israel and some sort of Jerusalem thing. What the heck happened down here? Kalmykia? United Soviets. Uh, what is the USSR even doing now? Led by Konev. Chemical ordnance plants. They look like they have a very interesting tree. I need to play as a, as a Soviet Union sometime. Chemical carpet bombing tactics. Sounds a little illegal. Ooh, but they can go to war later on, too. That looks like fun. Cannot be canceled manually. That's fine. Just let time go on for now. Decrease interest rates. We're good. Dealing with Italy. We can't do that. We can't even launch strikes on nuclear on Germany. I would like to. Aiding the Russian... Oh. Yeah, well, we might as well do this. We help out the Vladivostok uh, government. Let's go do that. Tests. Launch a test satellite. 70% chance of doing well. Let's see what happens. 
Seas make degrees, right? Seas are good. Seas are 70%. Oh, come on! 30% it fails. Disaster our attempted satellite launch has failed. With a rocket exploding in the launch pad, destroying the payload and causing damage to the launch launch site. We will have to wait for some time for some new spacecraft to be assembled and the launch shite to be repaired before we can attempt another test. Well, sh is this really supposed to be shite? Huh. Oh, okay. Whatever, I'm just here having a good time desegregating the army under da Mac Daddy. Looking good on guns. Looks like we're about to get another operative very soon as well. And what we were doing is trying to make these guys even thicker. Thicker, thicker, thicker. Oh, Rosa Parks, stay seated. Okay, well, that's probably part of the whole focusing here. So it's a rainy night in Montgomery, Alabama. And the downtown scenery glistens in the sheen. Rosa Parks boards a quiet but bus on the commute home. She moves instinctively to the rear. Montgomery's laws demand it, and she's one woman who and who is one woman in the face of the law. She's lucky there's no one in front tonight, for if there are white people sitting in the front uh, in the front, black men and women are required to exit and renter via renter or re-enter via the rear. And so she watches the cityscape melt and flow in the spray of the rain across the window as the bus fills up with other tired computers. The conductor, noting that the rows reserved for white people are filling up steadily, moves the sign indicating the black white row boundary by back by ten seats. It catches Rosa on the fourth row. By law, she's obligated to move to the back or face the wrath of civic legislatures. And who is one woman in the face of the law? Rosa looks up, takes her bag, and thinks of a young man in the papers last year. Lynch for the unspeakable, terrible crimes of speaking to a white woman without permission. Emmett Till is off the papers in a country still haunted by Jim Crow's ghost, but his face is fresh in her mind. She makes the most important decision she will ever make, and history begins to shift there in the crowd. By God, sir, I will not move. Open civil rights decisions. Oh, we get civil rights decisions. That should be fun. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Oh, that breakthrough is so good. Who cares about civil rights when you can have tanks? I don't need rights, right? I, I just need APCs and tanks. Maybe I should stop talking about that. Okay, then. Cool. Uh, so we get decisions. Open up the civil rights debate, uh, and finish desegregating the army. So... We have enough support. We can do that and get that done. The last battalion, army desegregation. Oh, uh, they groundwork. We could do that, but I don't feel like invading South America. What, what are we going to get from that? Oh, Iraq and Iran. Yes, kill each other. See what happens. Stabilize fuel prices. I don't know. So ever since the Civil War and Reconstruction era, the rights of African Americans in the U.S. has a, 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 across much of the Union. Oh, uh, where do you go? Oh, 10,000... Just take the rifles, I don't care. Um, uh, particularly in the South, Jim Crow laws as well as informal but institutional discrimination against black Americans has led to a severe lack of civil rights for the African American population, with the specter of racial discrimination existing across the country and haunting America's supposedly egalitarian democracy. I don't think they're democracy, though. With glimpses of the horror of racism pushed to the utmost extremes visible across the Atlantic, opposition to the segregated existence of peoples within the U.S. has rapidly built up, and despite opposition from these reactionaries who would want the policies to remain, something must be done for the good of the nation. And let's grab an operative first. Uh, Peter Lor Peter Loring sounds very familiar. I he sounds so familiar, I'm going to grab him. The Lost Battalion Army Desegregation. Uh, so there is a certain je ne sais quoi... Uh, to the end of a long journey walked with friends. Emotions can run high. Memories acquire the glow of collective bonding that precedes their conversion to a nostalgia of fodder and inconvenient memories. My bad. Let me click on that. Uh, are brushed aside to the forgotten of the interests of a good last impression. And this is how the 94th Engineer Battalion, the last all-color battalion of the U.S. Army, stumbles in in his final day at the Arkansas camp they've been mustered in. The battalion awakes, as it always does, grumbling over dress code and polished boots. Rehearsal for the final parade lasts through the morning and noon hours with the entire battalion, about 500 strong, made to march over and over through the blazing tiles of the square. That's gotta be hot in Arkansas. Rifles and boots and buttons are polished to glistening perfection. At last, the battalion commander, a cheerful veteran of the First World War, calls the soldiers to rest. The few photographers in the camp are immediately swamped by last-minute platoons and buddies looking to keep their friends in immortal memory, as the queues nearly delay the ceremony itself and their length. In the evening hours, the battalion is assembled one last time for one last parade. The battalion marches, turns, and salutes the general staff members gathered to watch, as well as the audience gathered behind them. One final run around the party square, a march out, and then it is over. Soldiers teary-eyed as if they had just been proposed to, share last hugs and embraces with their buddies. Friends wish each other well in the battalions they will be sent to after the units disbanding, knowing this meeting might be their last. The lights shine bright in the camps, swell after the silent hours at night. And when the sun comes up, its lights shine upon a silent and empty barracks, and 500 men who will never forget. Sweet sorrow in parting and let's well let's go and continue that idea with finishing desegregating the army and then we can up the civil rights debate once we get enough political power which should be not too far away we get 1.82 every single day I just wish the Soviet the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics does a little bit more please thank you urban surveillance squads oh they didn't do that one yet where are they surveillance squads oh it's over here it's urban surveillance hmm well, we got a lot of world tension. 
And we have a war goal against Hungary and Bulgaria, but I don't want to send my guys just to die. We can't get through Istanbul, so invading here would be a really, really bad idea. Yeah, we do have paratroopers, but... Mm, for now, I think it's just best if we waited. Just best if we wait. Mountain Infantry 2, great. Happy 1956, my friends. It's going to be a new year, new us. And let's get some more Paratrooper 2s. Very, very good. Armor Divisions, 40. I mean, this looks pretty good. Military Police. Get some bigger signal companies, because we can. More initiative. Thank you very much. Yeah, that looks really good. I mean, that looks awesome. A 33 organization is not ideal, but we've got Tactical Exploitation, in which we shall next do Assault Concentration for more soft attack and organization for... A motorized, mechanized, and tankerinos. And now we're going to need some more army XP. Mm. Machine assisted decryption, great. Government cipher schools is next. And we're led by the CIA. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know if I really trust the CIA about that, but whatever. Election years. The presidential elections are nearing yet again, and each of the candidates running for the presidency has began their campaigns and rallies across the country. Many faces, old and new, have put themselves forward, a, forward for a bid for the highest office, and the 56 elections promise to be an exciting one. An exciting time, my friends. Oh boy, oh boy. Con convoy interdiction? Why not? That sounds like a good thing to have. Uh, we on. Okay, we have no mountaineers. Okay then. Duplicate that. Maybe we'll see that like that. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Can I convert you to mountaineers? There we go. At least we got one mountaineer division. Marines, 20 combat width. No. You gotta hit, hit them very hard with this. One, two, buckle my shoe, son. You gotta have some really... Oh, wait. We can't save it because we're out of... God dang it. Mm. We need more divisions. Period. Infantry divisions. We gotta make... Oh. They're 26 combat width. Well, one, two, buckle my shoe as well. We're gonna need a lot of artillery where we're headed. These are really not ideal divisions. But that's okay. Wow. Minus 6.9 thousand of artillery. Nice. Well, you go to the top. And we're gonna make more military factories. Ah. Uh, Illinois. Indiana. Ohio. Michigan. Wisconsin. A good old steel belt. Open civil rights debate. Let's go ahead and try that. So, with civil disobedience by the civil rights movement becoming more and more widespread, and opposition building against the Jim Crow laws that plague much of this country, civil rights have for the first time been discussed seriously in Congress. Congress, of course, in response, is deeply divided. Some figures strongly denounce these racist policies, demanding their repeal as soon as possible, while Southern Democrats and others fiercely defended the rights of states under the Constitution to choose their laws and way of governing. Yet more try to propose some form of comp compromise, lest this issue tear the nation apart. With a lack of progress, what's clear is that this is the only beginning... Only the beginning of the civil rights debate, and certainly more is to come. Oh, Brown v. Board of Education, we need 50 political power to do that. We got one nuclear bomb in America, which does not sound like America at all, but whatever. Twelve black families in Topeka have filed a class action lawsuit in the U.S. federal court against the Topeka School District, or Topeka School District, which has caused or refused to, who has refused to enroll black children in white elementary schools. The case has garnered large-scale attention, and the Supreme Court must now come to a decision. We'll get more research speed if we modify, modify it and click on that. 3% more. Well, I guess the elementary schools do enhance the education of children from time to time. But 3% more research speed for modifying elementary schools? I guess they do a lot of research there. Alright, very cool. And let's do it. Why not? So, Brown v. Board of Education. Interesting. This is being hailed as the first major victory for the growing civil rights movement. I wonder if I don't do anything against segregation, does something happen? Maybe, maybe not, but anyway, it's backlash. The recent actions towards desegregation by the current administration, while broadly supported, has met strong and vocal resistance from segregationists, especially in the South. Controversy over the move has done something, because Altai has been defeated, but uh, controversy over the move has led to some loss of political support from these groups. Uh, we probably don't need aerial, call, aer aerial reconnaissance for that, and that's okay. Uh, mm, I think we're kind of okay with all this stuff. Improved working conditions would be nice, but we already have 100% stability. The Federal Reserve, covert operations. Well, I'd love to intervene in the South American affairs. Not really necessary right now. So, artillery looking pretty bad. Main battle tanks looking pretty bad. Gun-wise, we're looking pretty good. Not going to lie. Government staff schools. Machine-assisted encryption. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Do that. So, criticize policy. So, it says Senators. We got 5% more support. Very nice. Very, very nice. Gun-wise, is there anything I could spare? Because I just need more tanks. We need more rubber. Oh, we got another division. That's nice. Uh, don't go there. Actually, go there, maybe? No, 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 no. 
go here. No, go, 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 uh, go over here. There you go. If that's a case. I'm going to abandon France for now and put you guys back home, maybe? Nah, never mind. You guys are going to stay in France for now. Oh! These guys have uh, finished killing each other off. And we just got something because I pressed enter too quickly. Uh, let's work on this. Special forces. They get more hot and cold acclimatization factor. That'd be nice. Signal companies. That'd be good as well. Go ahead and train if you need it. Signal companies, too, are done. Uh, let's grab some of this. So, the T-27 xylophone. More rocket artillery. That'd be very... Or truck rocket artillery. would be very, very nice as well. You guys train as well because you all need it, obviously. And get some more army XP. Machine assisted encryption. Very good. Very good. Very good. I want to get to the next election as quickly as possible because we can do military stuff, but I really want to see what happens with the next election. Policies, and you can only work on this stuff for a while. Uh, inflation goes up. Reverse a new deal. Expand welfare. Mm hmm. It gives you more research speed for the other one, but that's kind of okay. Monthly population, increased science funding. That could be good as well. Some of these policies. Hopefully, we get some more stuff about China. I really want to. I really want to go to war with China. Military improvement, not bad. Less division training down, that looks pretty good. Military factory construction speed, plus 10% for two years. Work further on the infrastructure, or the interstate. Focus on resource extraction, not bad. Resource gain efficiency, plus 20%. Welfare focus. These take so long though, holy cow. I don't mind it being 280 days, but if they could break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces than just like one blank idea here, I think that would make people a little bit more happy. So, like, instead of just one welfare focus, go with, like, welfare for, like, the poor, maybe welfare for the old, like, the beginning stages of Medicare, Medicaid, stuff like that, and have, like, small bonuses for, like, these sm small groups that helps everyone out or something like that. I think that'd be actually really cool. So instead of, like, 280 days, maybe make each focus, like, 70 days, at least something a little bit more enticing, we'll say, than 280. 280 days? That's more, that's, all, that's more than half a year. I think that'd be cool if you could do that. Increase science funding, increase support for, like, Middle schools, elementary schools, universities. I think that'd be really cool because during the 50s and 60s, there was definitely more of a push to increase the funding for education, especially after the Soviets in our timeline started launching rockets and satellites into space. Much more of a support for that stuff. But we finished desegregating the military. Uh, hmm. Hmm. We went with private investments. Welfare wouldn't be bad, but reverse a new deal. Would that really hurt us? How bad would that hurt us? I mean,. Research speed is not bad. You hurt consumer goods, and I don't want to hurt consumer goods. I, I'm gonna get rid of that. So, the social welfare and Kinesi I never know how to pronounce that. Keynesian, Keynesian economics brought about by the FDR administrator administration simply do not make practical sense anymore. If we're to advance as a country, we should invest political capital in order to abolish its components. Well, this actually might be a really bad idea, but let's try it anyways. This is my one of my first campaigns in this mod, so let's enjoy it for what it is. And I'm still a little disappointed that uh. There's nothing's happening with the Benelux. I completely forgot about them until I looked over here. Why is there nothing? Because I, I just don't want to split this country up. I want to see if there's anything going to happen. It doesn't look like it, though. It really doesn't look like they're splitting anything up. Uh, I got toasters. Economic reforms. Yeah. And I, I just don't want to get involved using cons commands and stuff like that to... Um, oh, patent challenges Arthur. Oh. I don't want to split up, like, the country, just for the way we, it looks. Even though that could open up some opportunities for the Netherlands, which does not have a unique focus tree. So, whatever. The Democratic National Convention. Today is the day the Democratic National Convention begins. All three of the Democratic uh, candidates for the nominations arrive and await the delegates' vote. No matter who is chosen, though, the Democrats must face against a Republican for the first time in four years. Uh, Stevenson, Harriman... Uh, well, Truman's out, obviously. I'll die, Stevenson? I have no idea who these people are. Let's go with Stevenson, because he's the top choice, apparently. So, Patton challenges MacArthur. What most assume would be an easy Republican renomination for the current president, MacArthur, has been unexpectedly contested. A former colleague of MacArthur's of the Pacific War, former General George S. Patton, has contested MacArthur's nomination and is gaining popularity on a more explicitly conservative platform. With race becoming unexpectedly close, with the race, not race in general, but the race, becoming close, the nominee is... Uh, I'm going to play into this election between Patton and MacArthur. Uh, how it usually went historically for us, so it'd probably be easier for the incumbent to win. So I'm just going to stick with MacArthur. I love Patton a lot. I like Mac Daddy. I love Patton a lot. I'm just going to stick with MacArthur because 
odds are the incumbent is going to win anyways. So let's make sure we, we try to win. But Elvis Presley sweeps the states. Presley begins to make appearances with Bill and Will Winfield across the south, playing in gigs that leave the crowd wild and sweaty like something is possessing them. Indeed, many worried parents will outright call it demonic possession, but there will be no exorcism from the airwaves, no stop in the Memphis Flash. He begins to tour on U.S. TV shows as well, showing up on KSLA TV, getting condom condemnations, commendations from Johnny Cash and Johnny Horton. They're beginning to call his blend of rhythm and blues and country music something new, too black for country and too twangy for R&B. They're calling it rock and roll, and America swept away in its chords. After a show in Wisconsin, an urgent message on the letterhead of the local Catholic diocese newspaper is sent to the FBI. It warns that Presley is a definite danger to the security of the United States. Actions and motions to arouse the sexual passions of the youth. Thousands across the country are at risk, mostly the youth fell. Indications of the harm Presley did just in La Crosse were two high school girls. Uh, he just did two high school girls, whose abdomen and thigh had Presley's autograph. America has a new king for now. Hey man, if it's legal, it's legal, I guess. Don't quote me on that, but if it's legal... It's legal for a reason, I guess. Man, I should stop talking sometimes. Uh, anyways, I wanted to say that the Kingdom of Tunisia is out. Italy is de-Italianizing itself. We have the state of Libya. How's the faction looking? The Mediterranean Pact. Do they still have a good chunk of the Balkans? Uh, the House uh, hit back. We'll probably get some support. 77 and 72%. 72% in the House of Representatives. Goes up to 82%. Jesus Christ, MacArthur's doing great. <laughs> He's doing really great. Uh, soil concentration is awesome. Let's do some independent formations, more organization, supply grace, and recovery rate, which is good. Portugal still in the pact, as well as Croatia, Montenegro, Greece, Crete, and down here are the Portuguese colonies, but mm, not much else. No, that's okay. That's okay. We got some diplomatic training, get some more passive defense. You never know, we might find Chinese spies here in the U.S. What is China up to, actually? Uh, look, look at, oh, what, what is going on? Call to arms. Who did you piss off? 56, 60, armor. Oh my goodness, I want to do something. I could do, get that. Let's get some light aircraft. Uh, yeah, drop tanks. That'd be good. Uh, let's look at this. Good. Keep doing that. Get some more armor XP. Hold on. So who are you fighting? Is this 2003? Or is this 1956? Why are you at war with Iraq? Oh, they actually beat up... They beat up Iran. I thought Iran would actually win. Mohammed, what did you do? Uh, reduce Sunni Shia division. Reduce Kurdish... Oh, God. Do I want to get involved in Iraq? I feel like George Bush right now. Why? I don't want to get involved. Uh, and they already don't have enough supplies there. God dang it. <sighs> Fine. Uh, God dang it, guys. This is why we can't have nice things. And we called in Japan as well. Of course we did. Uh, we got a lot of subs. I like that. Go and do that. I guess we're not going to fight Italy for now. I mean, if we need to, we can put the Arabian Sea, but... Hey, we got a carry. That's nice. Uh, let's help out this fleet, even though we're going to use this, these guys over here. Actually, don't do that yet. Rebase over here first, and then we'll move you out. Uh, why are we at war with Iraq? What did they do? Yeah, they, did they nationalize the oil? I mean, yeah, that's important and all, but why don't we just open up our own fuel reserves? I mean, we have Alaska, right? Are they a core of ours? They're a core state, even though they're not a state yet, I think. Is Hawaii core? No, it's not. That's weird. Wait, hold on. No, maybe that, that, that doesn't make sense. When did Alaska become a state? I don't remember. But at least that, that should make sense. That's good. 60s. I guess do some 50s heavy SBIA. We could do that. I mean, let's do our air doctrine, I guess, instead. Interception defense? Sure. Home defense? Seems pretty good. Uh, what is China up to? So we had the thing about aerial reconnaissance about uh, Germany. Do we get the same thing about China? I think that'd be good if we had that against China, too. That just makes sense. Because it, it's literally a cold war. The Reveil Sous Report. Long of terms effects of the release of carbon dioxide. Probably nothing to worry about. Uh, ooh. And Ed Sullivan Show. Ooh. The man from Lupedo strides into the corner or the studio like he owns a place, and it comes falling at his feet and lapping in his hand. Women scream, teenagers jump about, and it's all about the host who can do to quiet the crowd. The poor man got drafted into cover for his boss. It's hardly his fault that history begins to move in that crowded studio right in front of him. And this history has a tempo, a rhythm, and a bass beat. Elvis, clad in silvery jacket and trademark Vaseline hair, begins per performing Hound Dog. Ain't nothing like a Hound Dog. Uh... A rhythm and blues piece from 48, and the cameras of the nation zoom in on his torso, whether he's whatever 
whatever he's doing off screen, and the ladies are going wild for it, and he's responding. 60 million hear Elvis' repertoire that night, going from the twang of R&B to the ache of the blues and back again when he finishes the crowd nearly mobs the stage. In a nature fearful for the future and conscious of its insecurities, the everyday grind is all there is, but for tonight at least, the man from Lupato's lights the eyes of the nation ablaze and he hope flows out with the beat of the airways, and the beat, as with all hopes, is addictive. Hot diggity damn, I'm hooked up on that sound. Well, by the time we get to 2020, that's old school. That's really old school. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. I think that's what it was. Fighter, CV, uh, fighters. Uh, do we have any bombers? No, we don't. Wow, that sucks. We can give you some fighter groups. Deploy them here. In the Middle East. See what we can do about that. I don't think they have much of an air force, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. We want more defense, soft attack, and organization, or more? We're going to have the best Marines and Mountaineers and Paratroopers. Advanced Special Training Forces. Good. Well, we're doing our part. I'm going to let the UK in get mostly involved because the supply actually is not very good around here, probably. Uh, actually, it's not bad. The German Congress begins, organized by the state apparatus. The first German National People's Congress is post-revolutionary Germany's first major political event. A new red state. Well, we'll see what happens. Hold on. Okay, so now you're blue. You were, like, brown earlier. Huh. I guess I could deploy tanks here, but I could probably really kill supply here. Um, do that. I guess I'll send my tanks. It's probably a really bad idea. But whatever. If we can get some more army XP, that'd be great. Hey, they got Baghdad. Oh. Okay. Yeah, go to war with uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq. That makes total sense. Okay. So we need more tanks, of course. We need more artillery. Oh, we need some more support equipment as well. After this, I'm going to be making a lot more uh, military factories, because we need them. Actually, we already have in the steel belt. So, oh, a little bit of lag. What's going on? M Mikhail elected in Germany. Okay. Interesting times ahead. Let's see what happens with Germany. They might not go a direction we like. Let's build up Minnesota. That state. Oh, Iowa. Iowa. Sorry if you live in Ohio. Ohio? Yeah. I'm sorry if you live in Ohio. That is a weird state. But we love Ohio because of it. And Iowa is a weird state as well. This is turning into a very weird, weird world. Oh, and they went Marxist-Leninists. The Austrian problem. Of course they did. Enforce reconstruction, protecting the proletariat. China announces ambitions. The Chinese dragon wakens from its slumber. It'll be interesting to see if they can do anything against Poland. Oh, there is Strasser. They could they cho could have chosen Strasser, but they went with Mikkel and Talheimer. He looks really weird. That's okay. Uh, we're almost done with our naval doctrine. Convoy escorts? Sure, why not? And then they're just kind of hanging out in Gotten Land, just kind of probably worried about what's going on in the world. No, uh, Strengeheim for you this time. No Strengeheim. Alright, you guys have made it. Ah, so election. Now the year's worth of campaigning has led to this. Today, as we Americans, we use our democratic right. We shall decide who our next president shall be. Whichever candidate is the first to get to 266 electoral votes shall be proclaimed our president-elect. The first to get 266. Why is it not the total number? Because of the time zones. Uh, anyways, who should be our president-elect? Upon election, the president will not be instantly become the leader. He'll be inaugurated in January. I don't know who this is. We're going with Mac Daddy, though. The incumbent usually wins, unless you're George H.W. Bush. I don't remember too much if he's been elected. Don't know. I don't remember. Was Carter a one-term president? He might have been. I think he, I think he was. It went from... What did it go from? I don't remember the 50s that well. I wasn't alive back then. Passive defense? Cool. I remember Tricky Dick got elected, and then he resigned. And I think it was Carter after that. LBJ was before him. Air spirit, missing efficiency. We'll do dogfighting experiences. And then... Carter, this is Ronald Reagan, I think. And then it was George H.W. Bush, who was a one-term president. And then Bill Clinton, and then Bush, then Obama, and now Trump. Yeah, yeah. I know my history. Totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Especially modern history? Yeah, totally remember. Hey, there was Iraq, so, like America should. Uh, we're gonna take everything. Well, I mean, maybe we shouldn't. You know what? We'll, ah, the UK went to war with them first. Maybe I should just give it to the UK and blame everything on them. You know what? I don't want to get involved. Blame it on the UK. Uh, We'll do that. We don't like Iran. You know what? We're going to leave this under us. Because we don't know what to do with this. I, I might just give it to Iran. I want to see what the UK does with... Okay, so they released this. Hashemat of Iraq, the jet age. Hey, he's, look how happy this guy is. Faisal, the second, cool. Um, 
If that's the case, I don't know if we really like these guys. We don't really like them that much. They're they're in the UN, but um, I'm just gonna give this back to them. This way, I can't be blamed for the actions of what they did in Iraq, even though we sent in our tanks and fighters. Uh, we didn't do it. They're a, see, we don't take everything. We we give stuff back occasionally, sometimes, maybe if it suits our needs. Uh, anyways, uh, go and do that. We still need way more equipment. Let's see, pass the defense, send five thousand rifles. We could do that. Do some anti-partisan stuff for now. Uh, sure, send some rifles. The new Europe. Oh, dealing with Italy. That's it. Uh, area reconnaissance. Still on, just on Germany. Political actions, nothing there. Economic policy, not really much either. Propaganda, not really much. Uh, the Federal Reserve is looking okay as well. No real reason to really get upset with it yet. Krasnoyarsk has been annexed on certain times, okay. Uh, I, mean, I could keep doing this. How about we try to max out the house first? Even though I prefer the Senate sometimes, let's try to max out the house. Let's see what happens with that. We got some drop tanks. Happy 1957, my friends. It's a new year, new us. Good times all around. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, we just had an election. Aerial refilling. Sure, why not? Some more infantry. Oh, no, a tank division. Great. Great. I love it. Looking not too bad. We have enough to maybe increase the size of this, but let's uh, increase the size of this first. Nice. So now everyone should train if you have infantry. That'll be good. Anti-partisan stuff, get some civilian economy stuff. Go ahead and come right there, that'd be good. Yeah, these focuses, 280 is just a bit too much, man. It feels like broken down into several smaller parts, like reverse new deal. Cut this, cut that, add this, add that, you know, stuff like that. But the inauguration of MacArthur, he's been sworn in as president again. Millions throughout the country watched on their TVs and listened to their radios as history was made. Sworn by Chief Justice Vincent, MacArthur placed his hand on the family Bible as he said the oath of office once again. Hail to the chief. Oh, the Free French Republic is back down here, of course. Oh, I got some more politics we can do, which is great. Is there anything about China down here? No. Okay, the multi-altitude flying, cool. Let's do that. MacArthur's been re-inaugurated. Uh, re what a show. Advanced Special Forces training. Extreme Environment training. It looks very nice. Let's grab that. Let's let time go on and see what happens. Reverse the New Deal. Let's see. Lay the groundwork. You know what? What else is going to happen? Uh, I do want to keep it clean. A very clean image, though. I want to do covert operations, but MacArthur needs a clean government. So let's leave that for there for now. Uh, I could do stuff over here, but... It's really a point to do that. Construction speed goes up by 5%, but we're already doing pretty darn well. We start off overpowered. I wouldn't say overpowered, just extremely overpowered. Just very strong, you know. But, I don't know, man. Do that and do upstate New York. Too bad New York is not separated, but that's fine with me. We got two nuclear bombs, which is not enough. Uh, build it in Maine. We could get some nuclear testing sets in Maine, right? That would never go wrong. I'm not really sure what else to do, to be honest with you. 87%? How about 92%? 400 to 430... This is so ahistorical. There would never be that much support in the house for any party. Unless there's like a war or something like that. This just looks so disgusting. Doesn't this not look disgusting? It looks like Poland or Zapotoslavia is poking Germany with a little poker. Uh, uh, that's kind of disgusting. But at least let's finish up the New Deal. Do one more focus, and then call it an episode. And tomorrow's episode might be the last one in this campaign, just because I, I'm i not really sure there's that much more to do. We took out the the, the Nazi menace, but... And I want to go to war with China, but... It seems like we're just waiting for China to do something, go to war. I mean, we have a cold war with them. They need to invest in heavy industry, they got some currency problems. The miracle in the Yangtze doesn't really help them, doesn't really make them go to war with anything. Uh, yeah. Oh, what is this? Oh, Chi Minh. This is the war about Vietnam. Expand the Central Army. The One Family. Reverse New Deal. Great cult of personality. Internal President. You know, I don't know. Maybe the next one will be the final episode. But let's finish off this episode with the reading of a new focus. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, 280 days again? Oh, my goodness. Uh, increased government investment. 25% construction speed is not bad. That does increase inflation. 
So, I don't like that. More research, welfare. We did reverse a new deal, so that's probably going to hurt some people. But maybe help some people. Opens the interstate highway decisions. I kind of like that. Uh, military improvement, that doesn't give us too much to work on. Is there anything else that gives us an event? There's, I didn't want to do this, but let's work on the interstate so we get the interstate highway decisions. Though we laid this foundation in our first term, the interstate highway system still requires a lot of work. We should seek to fund this work in order to see its completion. And we'll end and conclude to this episode with that. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Should I end the next episode after this one? Just because it doesn't seem like there's a lot to do. Yes, the UK went to war with Iraq, but other than that, it seems relatively peaceful until the Russian Republic goes to war with Baratia and USSR even though they seem to be taking quite a while as well. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we can carry on with MacArthur's second presidency. Presidential term. Thanks a lot for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.